the New York Times. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's a bombshell. It's the walls are closing in. It's the beginning of the end of the Trump campaign. The New York Times set off a bombshell over the weekend and blew themselves up as hoist with their own petard, as the they use as Shakespeare once said, a petard is a little explosion to hoist yourself, a little bomb to hoist yourself with it is to blow yourself up. That's what the New York Times did. They got they got Trump's tax returns. And I'm sure they got them just now near the election before the debate. Just I, I'm sure that's when they came into their hands. They weren't holding on to them, waiting for it or anything like this. So they had, I want to take a look at this story because it really is a self-own of the first water. Uh, it's a, an absolute embarrassment, but the Times is now beyond shame. They, you know, the, the Times is a place where they fire you if you allow an op-ed uh, to go into the paper that's they that their 20-year-old staff disagrees with. They don't fire the editor. They fire the, li- the little guy that they can get go after. They have this huge headline, long concealed records show Trump's chronic losses and years of tax avoidance. Now, first of all, this is a, a, a war declared headline. I mean, it's a huge, huge headline. So all kinds of dark innuendo, and really we should play this with da- what they used to call in the movies danger music. You want danger, you know, dun da 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 So I'll, I'll throw that in if I can. But here's, let me read you the way this is written, all right? As the president wages a re-election campaign that polls say he's in dangers of losing, in danger of losing, his finances are under stress, beset by losses and hundreds of millions of dollars in debt coming due that he has personally guaranteed. Also hanging over him is a decade-long audit battle with the Internal Revenue Service over the legitimacy of a $72.9 million tax refund that he claimed and received after declaring huge losses. An adverse ruling could cost him more than $100 million or nothing. Or he'll get a refund. They've been doing this damn for 10 years. They've had this audit going on for 10 years. The tax returns that Mr. Trump has long fought to keep private tell a story fundamentally different from the one he has sold to the American public. His reports to the IRS portray a businessman who takes in hundreds of millions of dollars a year, yet racks up chronic losses that he aggressively employs to avoid paying taxes. Now, with his financial challenges mounting, the records show that he depends more and more on making money from businesses that put him in potential and often direct conflict of interest with his job as president. Ba, 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 ba. But nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. This is it's an t- entirely dishonest piece of garbage. This is a guy, Donald Trump, who paid $70 million in taxes in over two years, right? Over two years. But he has all these businesses and he offsets the profits that he makes with losses on the businesses. This is what these guys do to avoid taxes. They they go through the way he does it. A lot of the way he does it had to do with a, a law that Obama passed during the downturn, during the Great Recession. So he was just using the law that a big what would a big story look like? What would a big war declared story look like? Right. It would look like he broke the law. He did something illegal, right? He took money from Russian spies. Something, some, you know, something. The guy, instead, instead they got, he uses his, the law to pay as little taxes as possible. That's really, and, and they did this back in 2016. The Times ran a story back in 2016. Donald Trump acknowledges not paying federal income taxes for years. He said, he said it himself. So he's making a bundle and he's using the law to not pay as much taxes, uh, to pay as little taxes as he can. I'm not even going to say, you know, it is amazing to me, though. Like, I'm not going to say that Trump is honest. I'm not going to say he's nice. I'm not going to say I would do business. I have no idea. But I will say this. They have hurled everything at him. The FBI has gone after him. The CIA, they've been trying to get at this guy. Every single newspaper, the New York Times, which has certainly the sources, the resources to go after him. They got nothing on him. They, I mean, really, really that that he's not always nice, that he didn't always treat his wives well. You know, I'm sure, they got that. But but you'd think at this point, this guy would be in prison. I mean, most people, if you investigated them at this level, you would be coming up with stuff because most of us do something along the line, even by mistake, even by accident, but they can't lay a hand on him. So they have to tell you, they have to tell you how to respond, right? 
First of all, they say in response to a letter summarizing the Times findings, Alan Garten, a lawyer for the Trump organization, said that most, if not all, of the facts appear to be inaccurate and requested the documents on which they were based. The Times declined to provide the records in order to protect its sources. And then Mr. Garten took direct issue only with the amount of taxes Mr. Trump had paid. So he says the thing is false and he paid taxes. Trump says the same thing. But they're going to tell you what this means, okay? Because it says he paid like $750 in taxes, even though, according to the New York Times, a former newspaper, according to the New York Times, a former newspaper, he paid $750, even though he had enough offsets to pay nothing. So he paid this number. So he says, listen to this. They say, Mr. Trump's U.S. payment after factoring in his losses was roughly equivalent in dollars not adjusted for inflation to another presidential tax bill revealed nearly a half century before. In 1973, the Providence Journal reported that after a charitable deduction for donating his presidential papers, Richard Nixon had paid seven hundred ninety two eighty one in 1970, an income of about $200,000. The leak of Mr. Nixon's small tax payment caused a precedent-setting uproar. Henceforth, presidents and presidential candidates would make their tax returns available for the American people to see. What has that got to do with Donald Trump? Absolutely nothing. But the message that they're sending you is, ooh, Nixon, Nixon bad. We were important then. The press mattered then because this was before we understood what the press was, that it was an agent of the Democrats. They're telling you how to react. You know, let's just go back for a minute in time to Harry Reid when Mitt Romney was running against Barack Obama. Harry Reid went on into the well of the Senate. And the important thing about this, when you speak in the Senate, you can't be sued. You can't be sued when you're speaking in the Senate. And he accused Mitt Romney of not paying any taxes. Here he is. If a person coming before this body wanted to be a cabinet officer, he couldn't be if he had the re he did the same refusal Mitt Romney does about tax returns. So the word's out that he hasn't paid any taxes for 10 years. Let him prove that he has paid taxes because he hasn't. We already know from one partial tax return that he gave us, he has money hidden in Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, and a Swiss bank account. Not making that up, that's in the partial year that he gave us. The word is out that he hasn't paid any tax for 10 years. This turned out to be wholly and entirely untrue, and it was called, quite rightly, McCarthyism. He was asked about it after the election. Harry Reid was asked about it on CNN after the election. Here's his response. So no regrets about Mitt Romney, about the Koch brothers, because some people have even call, called it McCarthyite. Well, they call it whatever they want. Um, Romney didn't win, did he? <laughs> That's the New York Times right now. They're all Democrats. It's all the same thing. I know for a fact that at the New York Times, they suppress any criticism of Joe Biden because they are afraid it will help Trump win. That is what they do at the New York Times. And that is what they're doing now. They they let brought this out at the last minute. I'm sure they could have had these papers any from the Democrats anytime they wanted. Obviously, it was an anti-Trump source that illegally gave them these uh, documents, these tax documents, it's illegal for them to do it, even if they possess, the Times points out that they possess the papers legally, but still it was illegal to leak them. But they, I'm sure they could have gotten their hands on them anytime. They got them now. They want them not to be checked. And compare this, you know, we now know for a fact, right? We now know that the FBI used information from the Steele dossier to get warrants on Trump people, knowing that the information came from a suspected Russian spy. Okay, that's what the FBI did. And we knew that, know that the decent agents there were upset about this, appalled that this is where they were doing. The Times ran this story in their local Saturday edition, but apparently not in their national edition. Here's how they listen to how they wrote it. This is the headline. Justice Department releases information intended to hurt Russia inquiry. The Justice Department this week turned over to allies of President Trump documents that appeared to, un namely the public, documents that appeared to undermine aspects of the investigation into the campaign's ties with Russia. The campaign had no ties with Russia. It has been proved. But the New York Times, which won Pulitzer Prizes by running anonymously sourced uh reports with with the anonymous sources we now know directing the press to keep this fo fake Russia investigation going. The New York Times won Pulitzer Prizes for this 
malfeasance for this dishonesty. And now when the facts come out and show that what they were doing was not not just journalistically wrong, it was morally wrong. Obama was a corrupt president who was corruptly using the FBI to investigate a president he didn't like. And it was wrongly done and the warrants were wrongly acquired. We know this now. The New York Times has never given back. They're not giving back their Pulitzer Prizes. They're not apologizing. And they're running stories like this as if this Russian inquiry was still going on. It's just embarrassing. This is an enormous cell phone. It is an enormous revelation. There's almost nothing to say about the press anymore because they're not hiding it. They're doing it right out in the open. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Andrew Clavin Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all our future content.